Hello, and welcome to this session on best practices for setting up disaster recovery for SAP systems in Google Cloud. My name is Rohit Kamat, and in this video, I would like to tell you a little bit about the various options you have for designing and architecting a disaster recovery solution for SAP applications in Google Cloud. So let's get started. First, let's quickly define disaster as it relates to cloud. However unlikely this event may be, where an entire geographic region is considered unavailable, meaning all applications in this region are also considered unavailable. This could be due to a natural phenomenon or an unnatural event. When such an event occurs, the business continuity process is triggered, where necessary folks in the organization are contacted and a decision to fail over all business critical applications to the disaster recovery site is initiated. For this purpose, it is always recommended to properly test, plan, and update the business continuity and disaster recovery plans. Needless to say, anytime there's a change to the system or the landscapes, these plans will have to be updated accordingly. Now, let's take a look at items to be considered for best practices to handle disaster recovery. To fail our applications to the disaster recovery site, proper setup, planning, testing, and validation are necessary. In every organization, various applications are necessary for business to function. For each of these business critical applications, certain key metrics, namely recovery point objective and recovery time objective, need to be defined. Recovery point objective is the amount of data loss business is willing to accept in the event of a disaster, meaning transactions that are being recorded in the system during normal business operations on the primary site that business is willing to live without in case of a disaster. These very transactions will then need to be either manually or systematically re-entered in the system on the DR site. Recovery time objective, on the other hand, is the amount of time business is willing to wait for these systems to be up and running on the DR site. It also means it's the amount of time the teams have to prepare the systems prior to handing them over to the business. So, it's the time taken to restart your database, start up your application servers, validate to ensure the system are up and running in the right order, validate connectivity of these systems to peripheral systems, validate business data, and also ensure users' connectivity to the DR site. Depending on the RTO and RPO defined for each application, appropriate solutions can be chosen and implemented. In case of a low RTO and RPO, you will need to ensure the systems are able to fail over quickly. And in case of relaxed RTO and RPO, an appropriate backup restore solution may be sufficient. To begin with, it is recommended to reserve necessary instances in the DR region to ensure you have necessary compute for you to stand up your business critical applications. Second, also have a proper business continuity plan that is up to date. Test and validate these plans at least once a year, if not more frequently. This ensures the teams involved know exactly what needs to be done in the event of a DR. Depending on the application and databases involved, there are several ways of replicating data and corresponding application configuration from primary site to the DR site. As an example, if you're using SAP HANA as the database, there is built-in replication referred to as HSR or HANA system replication available that will help with this process. This HSR will not only replicate data in the database, but will also help with database configuration and other items. In case of other traditional databases like SAP ASC, log shipping mechanism can be used to send data over to the DR site. In case of application servers, you can use Google Cloud Storage Snapshot that can help with this process. Now, let's take a look at some of the tools. If your landscape is fairly simple and only has a handful of applications to failover, then you can adopt native Google Cloud tools to set up your DR process. As an example, you can use persistent disk snapshot mechanism to create snapshots and schedule snapshots to ensure data is backed up on a regular basis. And in the event you need to recover from this, you can restore from these snapshots onto the DR site. In case of larger databases, you can either continue to use built-in database replication and failover mechanism, or save database backups to Google Cloud Storage and restore from them. These triggers and failovers can be scripted in Google Cloud. In case of complex landscapes, you can use partner-provided solutions that are available in Google Cloud Marketplace. 
Apart from infrastructure, you will also need to ensure your network is laid out appropriately. This is also to ensure your users are able to connect to the DR site. Typically, this is done by updating your network alias in the DNS to point to new DR IP addresses. Second, you need to ensure the primary and DR sites are able to talk to each other during normal operations to perform replication. This is all made simple and easy in Google Cloud via the dedicated, high-bandwidth, low-latency fiber, which allows connectivity between sites without having to go to the internet or use an ISP. Virtual Private Cloud, or VPC, provides networking functionality that can extend your network around the globe. You can set up your network in such a way that your primary site and DR sites are in the same VPC, or you can also create a subnetwork and IP address range for the DR site. Another option is also to place your primary and DR sites in separate VPCs, or for that matter, even in completely different projects. That's the true flexibility that Google Cloud provides at the network layer, giving you extensive control of how you want to design and lay your network. In closing, I would like to say that disaster recovery planning is very application and organization specific. Proper planning and testing is paramount to having a smooth failover in the event of a DR. Google Cloud can provide tools and integrate with applications and databases for a smooth failover process. Finally, I would like to point you to documentation that you can refer to for items that I did not cover today and also find more detailed documentation on rest of the topics. Thank you.